Hey everybody, Kalani here, and I'm in my studio. It's a kind of chilly January uh, day, and it's been raining a lot. That's I'm sort of bundled up here. Uh, but I wanted to, to, to reach out to you and give you a little overview of what you can expect at a developmental community music course, or DCM course. I've been teaching DCM for about 20 years. I'm very happy to say that it's been well received all over the world. I teach DCM uh, on several continents and I use the techniques that I've developed in my work almost on a daily basis. Uh, and I'm still developing more all the time because education is a lifelong practice. Uh, something that I believe it's very important to me and I hope it's important to you as well. And in fact, if you're watching this, then you're looking for ways to grow and improve. And so I applaud you for that. What will you learn and how will you learn at a developmental community music course? So I'll talk a little bit about the resources that I would recommend that you have, a little bit about my particular philosophy and a little bit about what you can do to make sure that you're prepared to come for the course and to make sure the course is right for you. So one of the things that I want to recommend right off the bat, and I want to say, and I want to be honest with you guys because there's a lot of courses that you can go to now many of the courses, and you'll see advertising, they'll say that you don't need any musical skills to go to the course and participate. That's not what I say about DCM courses. I, I used to say that. Um, my experience has shown me that people who come to a course like the DCM course without any musical experience have a very hard time and they struggle and they don't usually get as much out of it as people that have a musical skill set. So I recommend that if you come to the DCM course that you have a musical skill set, that you have some experience. It doesn't have to be with drumming, but you should feel comfortable with music, making music. You know, you want to be a musician on some level. Okay, if you're not a musician at all, there are some other courses that you can go to that don't really focus so much on music. Maybe they focus more on fun or just being in community and they use music in a more cursory way and it's not as central to um, the practice or the outcomes or the, the way we help people. Um, I believe in the power of music, but I also believe that if you're going to use music, then you want to use music, not something that is sort of like music or just using the instruments. So. Here at the DCM course, we're all about music. You know, I am a facilitator, so I do understand how to make things easy for people who don't have a lot of skills. And if that is you, if you're excited and you're motivated and you don't have a lot of musical skills, that's okay. But I do recommend that you are familiar with music and you have a musical background of some kind. Okay, so how to prepare. Well, there's a few publications that I've put out over the years and I recommend that you get them and that you look at them and and you uh, absorb the material before you come to the course. It's going to make it easier for you, more effective for you and better for everybody there. And one of the main publications you could get is called Together in Rhythm. It looks like this, published on, um, well you can get this just about anywhere, published by Alfred Publishing. Together in Rhythm is a book with a DVD. That'll give you a really solid foundation, kind of a look into the background, my background, history, and the platform of the DCM approach. A little bit newer book is called The Way of Music, Creating Sound Connections in Music Therapy. Now, while I wrote this for music therapists, you don't have to be a music therapist to understand this book and to use it and to get a lot out of it. This book takes you through the very beginnings of music making all the way back to listening and essentially noticing the sounds in nature and then slowly one element at a time we build up your musical skill set with a view to improvising first by yourself then with somebody else or with something else creating some relationships and then finally with a group of people in a dynamic way and we look at re musical relationships how they're created and how they can be used to create interpersonal changes and interpersonal relationships. This is a wonderful book for anybody who's interested in learning how to use music to create positive change. Comes with a CD, okay? That's the way of music. Another piece that you could get is called Drum Fun. This is a book of musical games. 
This is a little bit different than facilitating music. It's not improvisation, it's not a drum circle, it's not traditional drumming, it's pre-musical and extra-musical experiences that use the principles and elements of music in a fun way, in a structured way. And this is one of my most successful products. You can get this off of Amazon. It's called Drum Fun Musical Games for Groups. That's a DVD. Now, this is a new publication. We're gonna be using this one called Kalani's World Rhythms. This is a new publication with Hal Leonard. It features six world music songs with drumming arrangements. So we're gonna be using some traditional drumming. We're gonna learn how to play different drums. These arrangements are from the Caribbean, from Brazil and West Africa. So we're using things like conga drums, surdos, djembes, dunduns, different kinds of instruments. Very, very simple. Very easy, very basic. These are really arrangement. These arrangements are made for an elementary school level student, which is good news for everybody because simple is good. I use these songs all the time in my practice, both as a music therapist, music educator, and community music facilitator. People, there's this kind of idea out there that people shy away from learning songs or performing music or you know, doing traditional music. That's why drum circles are very popular. My experience has been that people love learning songs. They love to sing. They, they love learning things that are authentic and that are relevant. Every one of these songs has a story behind it. So I use the story or the program of the song to enhance the experience. Um, my experience has shown me that people love learning music and they like playing music together. So I don't shy away from teaching a song or teaching a rhythm or teaching somebody how to play a drum. People love that. So we're gonna be learning some of this material. You can get this now. This comes with downloadable video and audio. Everything you need, including tuning, how to play the instruments. So if you're new to drumming and you don't know anything, this, this would be a great place to start for you. And this is great for, of course, elementary school classrooms. Uh, a music therapist could use this to give him or her a foundation. A community music facilitator or community drumming facilitator could use this as a platform. And I use these songs all the time. I have for years. They're very fun, time-tested, uh, group-tested music. So in addition to those resources, we'll be learning how to facilitate. And I um, also want to make it clear that DCM is not a procedural or protocol-based approach. It's a skills-based approach. And while there are many programs where people teach a system you know, or a formulaic way of facilitating, my philosophy and where I've gotten a lot of success is in simply being prepared to create and to facilitate an experience in the moment that I believe is suited for the participants and that's relevant for the participants and that addresses their needs in the moment, addresses who they are in that moment on that day. So it's not a matter of a formula or following a recipe, which although you know has some strengths, can leave people feeling a little manipulated or just run through a certain you know A, B, C, D, E and you're done kind of feeling. Um, as a facilitator, I think it's really important to honor people in the moment, where they are, who they are, how they feel, and then create and respond um, with that information in mind. So DCM is very much about giving you the tools and the strategies and the techniques that you can use to create any kind of program that you might need or that you might want to provide to a group. I hope that makes sense. And I'm not saying that my way is better than any other person's or any other organization's way. There's lots of different programs out there. If you're the kind of person that wants to have a formula and you feel comfortable with that, then I would recommend going to another training to get that. Um, we do have resources here at DCM, you know, where you could learn a song or a pattern and you could, uh, or a, a rhythm ensemble and you could use that as a platform. But if you want an A, B, C, D, you know, one, two, three, four, five, uh, beginning to end kind of protocol, then I would look at other programs. If on the other hand, you would like to get skills that you can use to create, let's say, 
the program that you want to deliver or the program that hasn't been invented yet or that's not, you know, a specific type of program that you repeat, but something that you would create in the moment and that's exciting to you, if that's the kind of person you are, uh, if you like um, being creative and spontaneous, then I would highly recommend that you attend the DCM course because that's kind of what we're all about. Okay, I hope this makes sense to you. So uh, just to review, come with a musical skill set. It's gonna be better for you. It'll be better for all the participants. Um, I've given you the list of resources that you could look into. I have other books and products, but those are the main ones that I would recommend that you review. Uh, come expecting to work on your skills and your, your strategies and your, your capacity as a facilitator and come with an open mind, an open heart, and a willingness to learn. Uh, also know that we limit the numbers to a relatively small group, around 15 people, and that's because I believe that uh, the more people you add to a training, the more diluted everybody's learning becomes and the less personal it becomes. And I want to connect with each of you personally. It's important to me to focus on quality of uh, teaching and, and a quality experience for everyone. So I don't want to have gigantic groups. Uh, that's okay if it's a one-way teaching thing, you know, if you're just learning a specific thing um, that you're going to replicate, uh, being in a large group is okay. But for us, for DCM, we need to have relatively small groups. So don't wait too long to sign up if you think DCM is the right course for you. If you have any questions or concerns and you'd like to contact me ahead of time, please do at kalanidas at gmail.com. I look forward to answering your questions and I look forward to seeing all of you at the DCM course.